If you're a homeowner looking to do a painting project and you're still on the fence about which equipment you should be buying, today in this video we're going to go through my rig, which is about $70 to get started, versus just going to a dollar store and grabbing $20 worth of gear. We're going to talk about the different equipment and we're going to do practical examples and demonstrate how it all operates so you can make your own decision. I'm Jeff from Home Renovision and on our channel we equip homeowners to be able to do renovations, remodels and builds in all different capacities in their house. Today we're talking painting. This is the one subject I think that as a homeowner you've got to master. You've got no right starting anything until you learn how to paint because no matter what you're going to fix nowadays, you're going to finish with a paint shop. And if you can't finish something, then you shouldn't start it. All right, so we're going to go through my gear, what I use. We're going to have links for you to help get it. And then we're also going to go through what I picked up at the dollar store. We're going to show you the differences really in the quality of the equipment and how they operate practically. I'm going to go to the other side of my studio here. We're going to do some paint work with both of those rigs. And I'm going to let you decide at the end of the day what's best for you because not everybody does a lot of painting. Maybe the $20 solution is perfect for your budget and for what you're looking for. But I'm telling you right now, if you plan on doing a lot of painting, you might want to consider upgrading and buying some real professional gear. Now, for today's exercise, I'm using a sim strain. This is just a basic jumbo tray. We're going to paint from both gear out of the same tray. You can get a lower cost version at a dollar store or at a hardware store for just about $3. It's like a throwaway aluminum and that's an option. This one here costs about $10 just to keep the night on budget. And here's the workhorse. This is my Worcester roller. This is a ball bearing roller, okay? It is a closed cage which means we can wash this and use it over and over and over again. And this one here is actually about two or three years old now. I use this to paint my entire farmhouse project and if you haven't seen any of that, I'll throw a link in the video description. Yes, I renovated an 1880 farmhouse and turned it into a brand new palace. We just finished selling it last week. Now, this one is about 10 bucks. And what I use for that is I use microfiber rollers. Okay? Now these claim to be lint free and 99 times out of 100, they don't have any lint on them. Okay? And I know we're gonna get all the professionals going, oh, you have to tape it first. Just to demonstrate what we're talking about here. The professionals will tape their rollers in an attempt to get rid of any extra fibers right out of the gate. Now, if you read the package, it tells you to do what I tell you to do. Wash the roller before you use it and let it dry. Give it a good spin and all the extra fibers come loose. But you can also do this and you will see nothing came off. Now that is a good roller. It is also a PVC core, okay? Which means it's designed to be washed and used over and over and over and over and over again. It costs almost $10. But again, this will probably do 20, 30, 40 paint jobs if you treat it right. A little bit of love goes a long way, okay? <laughs> I also like to use a brush like this. It's what I call the middle of the road, right? It is a cute little brush. It works great. It's a three inch, it's angled. I use this to do all my cutting in. No, I don't use tape when I paint. Kind of nutty when you can do a perfect job with a brush. I have a video on that. We can show that to you, links in the description. But a $20 brush is a good quality professional brush. You can get brushes that cost you $50 if you want to, but usually that's just for guys who like to drive Lamborghinis and have talking points. The reality is 20 bucks will get the job done. And if you get a brush, make sure it comes in a plastic case. Because when you wash it, you want to stick it back in the case and look how it instantly forms the bristles again. Okay? That will keep it perfect condition and it'll shape itself so every time you use the brush, you don't have these stray hairs sticking all over the place. That'll drive you nuts. And lastly, we got the Sherlock stick. This is my paint stick. It has a positive locking handle so it can't twist off while you're working. One of the biggest problems that you'll have out there on the job site is if you use a threaded rod, you'll get your handle and you're painting in one direction and all the pressure is on one side of the stick and it'll actually disengage itself, okay? And then you start getting big streaks and lines on your paint job, it drives you crazy and you end up, oh, hitting something you didn't want to paint, okay? This is adjustable from two to four feet. I've also got one that goes from six to 12. This is perfect for ceilings because you can paint with your hands below your heart and that means you're not working hard. The hardest thing about painting is if your arms are up above your heart, that means you're working like you're running a marathon and your heart can't keep pumping the blood long enough. If you don't believe me, 
just go pause the video right now and stand like this for 25 minutes and tell you how you're feeling. On the flip side, I went to the dollar store, picked up myself $20 worth of gear, and there are other versions in the difference in the price point, but check this out. This is another cage, right? Looks like it might work. This particular cage is very light gauge. It's gonna need explosives to get into here. Let me check this out. Again, they have a microfiber roller and it compresses over the middle of this, okay? Now just to give an idea, look at the difference in the metal. This is twice as thick, which means that when you're rolling, you can use pressure. If you're using drywall primer on a project and you're not using pressure, you're not doing it right because you have to force the paint into the paper on the drywall. This will work for a finishing job and the comparable stick. It's a piece of wood and it's threaded. The other thing, you could always use a broomstick. Lots of broomsticks have a universal thread that's the same size. All right. But be careful, most broomsticks nowadays that have that thread are also plastic and hollow. And if you use pressure, you'll just snap her in half. And then guess what? You're back to the store buying an $8 broom. So here we go. There's the cage and roller. That'll work for most homes. If you've got an eight foot ceiling, you're gonna be just fine with that. Almost forgot, we gotta do the fiber test because both of these rollers claim to be lint free. And I have no idea, I've never done this test before. This particular roller, I believe, was two and a half bucks. Sounds like one hell of a deal. So let's see if it has any fibers that are coming off here. We're gonna all learn something together here today. Oh, you can already see all the fibers coming loose on the roller here. Okay, any of them come off? Yeah, there's one, two, three, four. Doesn't sound like a lot, but there's four fibers on the tape. That's four times you gotta stop, wipe that off, clean your fingers, go back and back roll. That's a pain in the butt. Definitely, if you're gonna use this, wash it first. Hopefully it stops shedding. In my experience though, guys, no matter what you do, you're gonna want an $8 one, unless you really just don't care about the quality of the finish. Or if you live in the South and you've got that orange peel textured wall, the odd bit of fuzz, no one's even gonna notice it, right? So, good for you. When it comes to the brushes, Dollar Store didn't really have anything to offer. This is a knockoff on one of these little paint gears. You've probably seen it on TV. We're gonna dip it in the tray. It has these little roller wheels. You can set it up against the wall. We'll try cutting in with this and see what we think. I am not putting a lot of faith in this, but hey, the other option is to paint with that. That's a four inch square brush and the hair's already falling out. Listen, you get what you pay for, but if you're looking for a budget deal and you don't mind picking the odd piece of lint or the odd hair out of the paint, this might just do the job. So I think it's time to walk over to the wall, pour some paint and give this stuff a try. We'll see what the difference is like. Okay, so now I'm gonna just jump into a comparison between my professional rig and the dollar store materials. Now, I'm not gonna go do this based on speed or how awesome my tools are. The goal here is to find out, is the other set of tools going to perform and are you going to be getting the job done with those, okay? Tips and tricks so that if you're gonna buy it and use it, I don't want you to get halfway through the job and have everything break and then buy it all again, because then you're almost invested the same as buying the good stuff the first time. Right, but I get it. Like, everybody's on a budget. And if you don't love painting and you might not be doing this more than once a year, maybe it's worth it to get some throwaways, because who wants to spend two hours cleaning gear? All right, here we go. So my technique, I don't use any tape. I just cut, okay? And that works great. And we come across the bottom. And that's halfway, there we go, all right? Piece of cake. I know, that was ridiculous. And we'll also cut the bottom where the heater is. All right, this would be a good place to show. There we go. Boy, I almost wish I had a little more paint color on that, eh? That comes off a little white, doesn't it? I can still see it. You're okay? Okay. And we're gonna get it in tight into the corner here. All right. So one of the things that this brush does is because it's angled, it allows me to force just a couple of bristles into a corner, okay? And I can get nice little triangles, okay? So I can paint 90 degree angles, all right? Now we're gonna grab the roller and see how well that works and how simple and fluid that system is. Okay, now we're gonna load up the roller. Now if you're painting at home and you're just getting started, it's hard to get a lot of paint in the roller the first time because it sits on the surface. So the first thing you want to do is grab a spot that you can just roll over and over and over again, okay? And pushing with medium pressure. This is going to help force all the paint inside that roller sleeve, all right? So that it's really easy to load up after this. Don't look for coverage on the first one. All right, now we can just stretch it out a little bit. 
try not to get too close to your trim. But at the same time, you want to get close enough to change the texture from brush to roller. Okay, there we go. Now it loads real easy. There we go. There we go. Nice. Nice and controlled. And because of this lock, my handle isn't coming undone. My sleeve isn't sliding off, okay? That's great. So just to be clear, I've never used a tool like this in my life. And I'm really hoping it works because what a great solution to people who don't know how to use a brush and don't want to have to learn. You know, you do a paint job once in a blue moon. My idea is, from what I understand, you dab this stuff into the paint. Yeah, gotta have enough on there to actually paint the wall. There we go. I'm gonna start away from the wall just a little bit and see if I'm getting good coverage. Okay, so it leaves a streak just like a paintbrush. That's cool. I feel like I gotta prime this pad before I can give it a fair test. Okay, let's add some more paint now. Oh no, I got paint on the wheel. That's definitely gonna end up all over the trim. Well, that's your first problem right there, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's give this a try. We're just supposed to just run. Okay, ready? Yes, now, now, to be clear, this is obviously a knockoff of something we've seen on advertised late night television for the last 25 years, and it's red. Don't know the name. If you do, please put the information in the comment section and let us know what your experience is like. This one, however, leaves paint a good solid, almost quarter inch from the trim, and it leaves it in a ridge. That's just, maybe turn it around. Yeah, I use it backwards, it works better, and then there's paint all over the trim, but, wow, that's just a failed test. I'm not gonna waste my time doing that anymore. The next thing, of course, is to try the roller assembly. Of course, I have an issue with this cage because the wire is really thin, and that means it's really thin here as well. And when we're painting, all of the pressure I put on this goes right here first, okay? And that's why more paint, it, it dries out here before it does on this side, which is why you want a back roll. But I'm just worried this is gonna collapse on me. Okay, first of all, we gotta get this. Now this is a microfiber roller as well. Let's just try this. We gotta prime the roller here first. Wow. Okay. So right out of the gate, my first impression. This um, can probably work for doing like finish coats. Don't buy something like this for drywall primer. You can't put enough pressure on it. I, I'm, I'm already feeling like I'm about to break it. I can't use any pressure. So if you're gonna go with something like this, the roller sleeve seems to be operating fine. Let's just go top to bottom on this. Okay, gentle pressure. This is gonna take a little bit longer. You can't do any speed and that's fine. Like I said, it wasn't a race. But because you can't use much pressure, like, look at the angle my stick is on, just now trying to hold it on the wall. I'm just trying to get it to even out. It looks like, whew, that's precarious. Wow. Maybe in this situation, you're better off getting rid of the stick. Oh, let's see if it's any better holding it by hand. Okay. This feels actually a little bit better, like you have more control. Yeah, I'm gonna say that you probably have a likelihood of success that this might last for one bedroom. Okay, but it's a throwaway. There's, there's just no way this is gonna last a second job. Um, unfortunately, I'm still gonna say you're gonna need to buy a regular brush and you can get them for 10 or $15 if you have to. And if you really absolutely must tape, but if you're gonna do more than one project in your life, then learn my system. We have a video on how to do that, okay? And we can show that in the description right here. If you like these kind of things, this or that, the, the comparison market test for equipment, tools, and materials, let us know in the comment section. I'd love to hear your feedback on this. It's a new concept for us. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel.